Hello everyone, my name is Zura and I'm the code hulk. In this video, we are going to see six major changes in PHP 8.4. I have two browsers open and I also have the following repository with six PHP files. Let's start with property hooks. We have basic class user. We create the user and we try to print the full name. We're going to define getter for the full name and we are taking the first name and concatenate it with the last name and returning that. Also, we are setting the name. We are exploding that, taking the first part and assigning first name, taking the second part, assigning into the last name. If we open PHP 8.3 property hooks, we're going to see the following syntax error. If we open PHP 8.4, click on this, we're going to see that it works fine. Now, if we try to set the full name, we're going to see updated full name here as well. Now, let's see a second example. And now we have the application. So we define the API key and we create the instance of the application and print that API key. Now, let's define new property and this is going to be internal API key. And then I'm going to create public API. API key with property hooks. I'm going to define the getter, which is going to be multi-line function. Here in this function, you can write any logic you want. Right now, I'm just going to write a log and we are simply returning this internal API key. I'm going to define the setter, a single line setter. I'm accepting the key and assigning this right here. However, I can also remove this argument string key and use the predefined name value. This is going to do the exact same thing. Now let's replace this setter with the multi-line version as well. So here I'm just going to do a simulation of check. If the user can set the API key, then we're going to set the API key. Otherwise, we're going to throw an exception. Now, if we try to set the API key in the browser, we're going to see two logs and two times printed different API key, exactly as we expected. This is probably smallest, but also very important change in PHP 8.4. From now on, since PHP 8.4, we don't need these parentheses around new class name when creating a new object. If we check this in PHP 8.3, we're going to see this gives a syntax error. However, in 8.4, this works like a charm. And this, my friend, is a very, very convenient thing. There are four new array related functions in PHP 8.4. If you come from JavaScript, these functions might be very familiar to you. So we have to do's array with three to do's and let's say we want to find a to do which has ID two. For this, we're going to use array find giving to do's right here, a callback function, and we're going to return true when to do ID equals two. And let's print the to do, have a look in the browser, and we see right here the to do in PHP 8.4. However, in 8.3, we see array find is not a function. In similar way, we have a second method, array find key, and this function will simply return key of the element which has ID equal to. So if you print the index, check in the browser, we are going to see index one right here. These two functions actually work on associative arrays. Let me add keys to the elements and let me add another property completed by. So let's say that this to do is created by this user and is completed by this user. Now let's say that we want to find a to do which is created and completed by the same user. In this case, observing the following array, we're going to find the following to do because it has created by and completed by the same user. So now let's change this. We're going to accept second argument inside this function, which is going to be key. And now we're going to compare to do completed by into the key and we're going to return that to do. Let's do something similar for the array find key. We accept key. We compare completed by into the key and we print the index. Now, if we check in the browser, we're going to see that this is the to do and this is the key. There are two more functions. One of them is array any. This function will return true if any of the following callback functions will return true. So in our case, we can check if any of the to do texts contain word by, this is going to return true. If we print this, we're going to see true in the browser because there is one to do which has word by inside. And the last function is array all. This function should return true for all to do's and only in this case, all will be true. So in this case, we're going to return true from here if the to do contains letter E inside. So now if we print this, we're going to see that this prints actually true because every to do contains a letter E inside. However, if we change this into letter A, say we refresh it, now we see false because there are actually to do's which don't contain 
letter A. This is very interesting feature in PHP 8.4. We have simple channel class with name, country, and income. I'm going to create child class verify channel and add one update method. Now, if we create instance of verify channel, and then we can print name and country, which works fine, and it's going to work in both PHP 8.3 and 8.4 as well. However, now let's introduce asymmetric properties. And right here on the following declaration, when we declare these properties inside the constructor, we are going to add second visibility for setting values. So we set public for reading and private for writing. Public for reading, protected for writing protected for reading and private for writing. You can add this asymmetric property visibility on the properties defined on the class level right here as well. One thing you should keep in mind is that set visibility needs to be the same or more restricted than the read visibility. So in this specific case, we cannot have protected here and public right here. This will give us an error. And now, since we defined this asymmetric property visibility, now let's have a look. So I'm going to define and assign income right here, which obviously should give me an error because income has private visibility when setting the value. So I cannot actually set the income inside child class. Also, if I try to access income, this is not allowed because income has protected visibility when reading the data. If I save this right now and have a look in the browser, in PHP 8.3, we're going to see the following error. Multiple access type modifiers are not allowed. However, in 8.4, we're going to see the following error. Cannot access protected property income, which is coming from line 35. If we comment out this line and call function update, now we're going to see another error, which is coming from line 27. This is it. Also, if I comment out this line and then try to access name, country or income, all of them will throw an error because setting those values are not public. Setting for name is private, setting for country is protected, setting for income is also private. And now we're going to see an error on line 39. In PHP 8.4, we also have a deprecated new attribute. We have a class and we have a constant. On the constant, I'm going to add deprecated PHP attribute. And now if we check this in PHP 8.3, this is not going to do anything. So we don't see any kind of error right here. And it simply prints the value false. If we check this in PHP 8.4, we're going to see the following deprecation error. The deprecated attribute can be added on constants, on class methods, as well as on standalone functions. Now I'm going to define another function, md5, and add deprecated attribute as well. However, I'm going to customize the text message for this deprecation. Let's create another function, my md5, and I'm going to also add deprecated attribute on this. Now, if I call md5 method on this encoder class, or if I call my md5 function, which I created right here, both of them will give me the following error from line 28 and 29. And also we see this custom message right here. One of the coolest addition in PHP 8.4 is lazy objects. We have a simple class channel. We also have this load channel videos fake function, which accepts the channel name, slips for two seconds and simulates getting videos. So it iterates from one to 100,000 and simply creates an array of string values with the length of 100,000. Now in the constructor, I'm just going to write a dump and load channel videos and assign this into these videos. Let me create an instance of the channel and I'm going to print the object videos count right here. And I'm going to also print the memory usage right here. So if we save this and have a look in the browser, in both versions in PHP 8.3 and 8.4, this is going to work and give me something. You might have such type of classes in your application, which does some heavy loading. It might be slow or it might fill the memory. You might be creating those classes on the application initialization, but you rarely use them. For this, there is new lazy objects in PHP 8.4. The whole idea is that you still define the initialization code, but 
behind the scene, they will be initialized when you start using them. Let me remove this new object initialization and dump, and I'm going to create this reflector using new reflection class, giving channel class right here. Then on the reflector, I'm going to call new lazy ghost. This is a new function, accepting a callback right here. And right here, we accept an instance of the channel. Now we're going to print right here, lazy object, the class of the channel. And I'm going to also call channel construct, giving the code holic name right here. So using the following code, we are actually creating an object out of this channel. And this channel right here is a ghost object. It is not fully initialized. It's constructor and the following code has not been executed yet. Now, since we have this lazy object, let's print it and print its class as well. If we save this and have a look in the browser in PHP 8.3, we're going to see an error. New lazy ghost is undefined. In PHP 8.4, we see that the refresh was immediate. The memory is much less used. We still see right here an instance of channel class. However, the object is lazy ghost object. Videos in the name is uninitialized. We also see that the actual class of this object is channel. Now, if I try to access the name property of this lazy object, then PHP will execute the following code, print the following line and initialize this with the name, the code holic. We save this, refresh in the browser, we see it is loading for two seconds, and then we see channel right here, lazy object channel, which is coming from the following line. The constructor was called, this was printed, videos got loaded, and we print the name. And as you see, the memory is significantly more than it was previously. However, there might be cases when you want to set name and read that name without these lazy initialization steps, without loading the entire videos. For this, on reflector, we're going to call get property for the name and then call the method skip lazy initialization, giving the object right here. And then we're going to call second method set value on the property with the object and the value. So with one line, we are skipping the initialization. With the second line, we are setting the value. After which, if we try to access a name, it is going to be super fast. It is, it is not going to create actual object. And we see result in a second. And we also see memory used is much less. Videos are not actually loaded. There is one line equivalent of the following two lines. And this is reflector get property for name and set row value without lazy initialization. This is doing the exact same thing. We refresh it, it is immediate, and the result is not changed. After this, if we try to access videos, we're going to see a different result. It is going to take two seconds and videos will be loaded and used. Here we see array of 100,000 elements and at the end, we're going to see large memory used as well. This feature has a lot of potential and I'm sure it will be used a lot in the future in frameworks. All right, that's it for now. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more awesome content. By the way, if you're interested in learning Laravel, I have awesome course on my website, thecodeholic.com, Laravel for beginners. It has first couple of modules free. You can check it out and you might find it useful. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next time.